grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Welcome to Mass this morning. I must say that I've been very touched during this week by the number of people who've telephoned me from all over the place to say how much they've appreciated uh, following this act of worship. However they get it, it's beyond me. I don't understand computers and things. And, uh, well, you know, my off-the-cuff sermons, I have to be very careful what I say these days. But there we are. And, and so, um, let us here in church try to be particularly conscious this morning of all those who are worshipping with us, but in their homes a bit later in the day. And to those of you who are doing that, when I was at theological college, we used to have great debates as to whether a blessing would take over the telly. Well, we've moved a long way since then, haven't we? And, and um, I've learnt a lot more about the love that the Father has for us. And I'm quite sure that your act of worship at home is as valid as us here in church. And let us try to be of one mind and one heart all together as we worship. To prepare ourselves then to hear God's most holy word and to come into the sacramental presence of the Saviour, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us of all that is past, and grant that we may serve in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray to be kept faithful in the service of God. Lord, be merciful to your people, fill us with your gifts, and make us always eager to serve you in faith and hope and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Taught a lesson to your people. 
how the virtuous man must be kindly to his fellow men, and you have given your sons the good hope that after sin you will grant repentance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations shall come to adore you, and glorify your name, O Lord, for you are great and do marvellous deeds, and you who alone are God. O Lord, Lord you are good and forgiving. But you, God of mercy and compassion, slow to anger, O Lord, abounding in love and truth, turn and take pity on me. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. But when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means. And that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said when you pray you must pray thy kingdom come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. You'll note that I've spared you half of that very long gospel and that we move to the left and for a very simple practical reason I live in the world of very focals now <laughs> and I find it difficult to see when uh, Pauline's holding the book. Needs must have a devil cry. I can't tell you how many times in a week over recent days during the pandemic someone has said to me, why doesn't God do something? Well, that's just a variation on the question of the rest of life. 
every time I go to visit someone who's bereaved, and the first question is, why did it happen to me? Or if someone's ill, what have I done to deserve this? And over and over and over again, the simple answer is, why not? Why not you? You haven't done anything to deserve it, but it's called life, dear. That's just the way it is. I've come to the conclusion that life is a bit of a bitch with some highlights along the way. And it's as difficult for everybody as it is for anybody else. We're all in it together. Now Jesus in telling this parable isn't trying to give us any panacea as to why things have to happen. The message at the heart of this parable and the ones that I've spared you, if you read them afterwards, the message is patience. Patience. We all feel so self-important that we imagine God's got nothing else to do but think about me at the moment and make my life comfortable. But if you look at the bigger picture, if you look back over history, you'll see that when anything dreadful has happened, God has waited until the opportune time to act. One of the benefits of lockdown has been that I've got to volume three of Winston Churchill's four volume work, The History of the English Speaking People. <laughs> I must admit, it's hard to go in places, and I have learned book back with speed reading skills. But looking back over the last war, for instance, if God had just intervened at the beginning and sorted Mr. Hitler out once and for all, what would have happened? Some other tyrant would have sprung up, and the latter state would have been worse than the first. When we look back and see the pattern of history, you can see, I know this is, this is hard to swallow from a human point of view, especially if you lost somebody in war or lost your life in war, but, but as the pattern follows, the whole thing came to an end at the proper time when sensible agreements could be made and our generation can still say it must never happen again and yet in my dark moments I see it all taking place and it's all fitting into place again because we never learn the whole bigger picture is much more important so the heart of this parable is patience we must be patient in waiting for the completion of the kingdom. God has to be patient because we know that his heart of love is grieved when we are hurt or when we're in trouble or in pain. And even the birds in the parable have to be patient. They have to wait for the mustard seed to grow. And the next parable about the woman with her dough, she has to wait for the dough to do its job before the whole thing can come to fruition and completion. So somehow, while we still hang on, and it's very important to hang on, to this notion that God loves every one of us individually and personally and knows us inside out, he knows my thoughts before I think of them. Even though I hang on to that, I still have to look at the bigger picture of history and creation. And it's only then that I can see that actually Jesus brought in the kingdom. It's not something to wait for in the future. It's already here. But there are problems with it. There's Donald amongst the wheat. It's a difficult, difficult lesson to learn. But our patience is essential.
God never has just intervened and changed the situation. Because in doing that, he would make another situation more difficult. And if we pray for him to come and sort out one thing, we've got to be prepared for him to sort out a lot all at once. Even the sins that infect my soul. Oh Lord, sort him out, but leave me alone. No, no, no. There's a whole bigger picture of a field of wheat and darn. And the love of the Father is illustrated in the fact that he leaves the whole thing to grow. Because there are even bits of darn that might be worth saving and have something good about them. We just have to have the faith that God knows what he's doing. That's why most of our intercession should be taken up with adoration, <coughs> confession and thanksgiving, and the supplication bit should be the least important because in asking for things we're usually trying to twist God's arm into doing what I want rather than what he knows to be best. So let me just leave you with a picture that might help clear what I'm trying to get over to you. On Easter Eve, we all come into church in the dark with our candle. The Queen, God bless her, referred to it in her broadcast at the beginning of the lockdown, if you remember, at Easter time. And then the Paschal candle is brought in. One light, the light of Christ. And from that candle, we all light our candles. And the light begins to spread. There's a picture of the kingdom. We're still surrounded by darkness, but the light is spreading. Or to put it another way, if we were here in the middle of the night and we were sitting here in the dark, we wouldn't be waiting for one light. The picture we have to see is that we're sitting here with the dawn and we're waiting for the full light of noonday to come around. We're in a waiting day. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is yet to come. God's time, God's greatness, God's love just transcends every Every human thought, underneath of the everlasting arms, he will never let us down. Our call is to faith. No matter what goes on around us, faith in God. But ultimately, the kingdom will come in all its fullness. And we shall remain a part of it. Because we are all a part of it already. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand and profess our faith in you. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, to tell you God to the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, because is not made of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was desired from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and has seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to 
our full name. Accept our heart of thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and world without end. Amen. We pray, Father, for your holy church, the mother of all of us who bear the name of Christ. Grant unto her unity, peace, and concord, Especially we pray for unity within this Church of England. For those set in authority over us. And for all those who were hoping to be ordained at this time. We pray your blessing on them and for an increase of vocations to the priesthood ministry those responsible for selecting fit candidates and for training them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority in her, for the work of the National Health Service, for those striving to find a vaccine for COVID. All struggling with a cure. For peace throughout the world. And for a spirit of brotherhood throughout mankind. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Father, for all the blessings you bestow upon your family in this place. I pray for those who are worshipping with us, though not present. Long for the day when we can fill this church to its capacity again. to this parish all things needful for its spiritual welfare. Strengthen and support the faithful. Turn and soften the wicked. Arouse the careless, recover the fallen. Restore the penitent. Guard and tend the children. Remove all hindrances for the advancement of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, for those in any kind of trouble, for the lonely, for the bereaved, for those whose jobs are in jeopardy, for the unemployed, for those who have the responsibility of the welfare of others. Inmates of Featherstone, for all prisoners and captives. And the sick known to us for Maurice, Kath Pantley, Rita, Jim Watson, Monica, Adam Jones, Marley, Gary, Dennis, Bella, Kath Edwards, Eddie, Rosemary, Sheila Beamish. Pauline Bevan, Joshua, Baby Freddie, Bob, Jane Chester, Margaret Rose, Mal Ward, Mike Hampson, Katie, and Mary Banks, and for Barbara Haycock. Bless.
face them so that they may know your presence. And that even in the darkness they may never be afraid. Give patience and gentleness to all who minister to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently. Especially for Bill Scott, the priest. For all those whose anniversaries fall at this time, for Denny Powell, Anthony Rowe, Valerie Wheatley, Albert Evans, Bertram Smith, Jennifer Reeves, David Quinton, and Ira Clay. For our own families, benefactors, and friends. Those who died unprepared or unbelieving. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. So, in the moment of silence, we bring our private intercessions to the throne of grace. So we call on Mary, the mother of the Lord, the mother of the church, to join her prayers with ours, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord of all power and might, you are the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, <clears throat> nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, bring us closer to salvation through these gifts which we bring in your honour. 
Accept the perfect sacrifice you have given us and bless it as you bless the gifts of Abel. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, beloved, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, 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 all his church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show us a Father's love. Your Holy Spirit dwelling within us gives us on earth the hope of unending joy. Your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is the foretaste and promise of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. With thankful praise, in company with the angels and the saints, we glorify the wonders of your power as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favour on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, with St. Paul and all your saints 
on whose constant intersection we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Michael, our diocesan, Clive, our area bishop, Jonathan, our visitor, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departing brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. Remember your servant Bill. In this life you bestowed upon him the dignity of the royal priesthood. May he lead the praises of the angels in heaven. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and feed on him. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we, for we have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word.
I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sit down to supper with him and he with me.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me never to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee for ever. Merciful Father, may these holy mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to a new life in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.